I've done this walk so often, I've lost count. Despite COVID restrictions, I'm visiting a museum on my way to see some old friends. And here they are. Florence, Jane, Mary Louisa and Julia. The daughters of Edward Darley Boyt by John Singer Sargent. Well, if it isn't the most love work of art in the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston, it must be close to it. It was painted on commission in the autumn of 1882. The family were friends of Sargent's, part of a society of wealthy folk who divided their time between residences in America and Europe. After the last of the daughters, Julia, she's the one on the carpet, died in 1969, at the age of 91. She bequeathed it to the museum, along with the actual urns depicted in the painting. These urns travelled with the family to and fro between Boston and the family's residence in Paris, the idea being, apparently, that they provided a little of the comfort and familiarity of home. It's just amazing they survived all those Atlantic crossings. One of the pleasures of looking at them is to see how Sargent played down the patterns of the urns in the painting so they wouldn't draw attention away from the true subjects. And, as always with Sargent's work, it's wonderful to see the paradoxical way things seem to be both painted with careful fidelity and yet utterly spontaneous. By all accounts, he worked extremely hard to make his work seem dashed off. It is an extraordinary painting. It's a composition of two diagonals and a vertical line that create the three separate spaces the daughters inhabit. A line through the centre exactly bisects Jane's face, while drawing a Fibonacci spiral based on the famous ratio that occurs over and over again in nature, goes through the eyes of Mary Louisa and Julia. Divided into thirds, the daughters each inhabit their own portion. So careful is the composition that any attempt to rearrange the girls just won't work. Of course, this could easily be because we are so used to seeing them the way they are. But I like to think that there is this underlying structure that sort of subliminally works on us, making everything seem so right. But is it really right? Over the course of its life, people have speculated that the painting's very darkness somehow, in uh, some psychological way, foreshadows the future of the four daughters. None of them married, it's whispered, and all four daughters died without having any children. Well, in truth, why would they? They all had enough family money that they could forge their own futures and do just whatever they wanted, without the need of husbands. One delightful detail. After the urns were delivered to the museum, they were emptied. And it became clear this was the first time this had been done in a hundred years. What was in them? A paper aeroplane? A tennis ball? Sheets of geography lessons? three Babington shuttlecocks, many coins, a feather and a pink ribbon. It seems, even towards the end of the 19th century, girls just wanted to have fun. <laughs> Hi, John Bonner here. Um, just to say thank you for the nice things you've been saying about uh, art stories and that it began as a kind of way for me to use up time really while being sequestered during the COVID crisis and uh, seeing if I could make interesting films from really anything that came to hand. And um, I'll continue to do that. Please subscribe. And uh, that's how I know that uh, these are worth doing.